Welcome everyone to the Inspiring Careers in Hospitality and Hotel Services online event. We have an exciting agenda to deliver to you today and encourage students to participate in all activities, including the polls and the live Q&A session with our expert panel members. We have muted all participant microphones to ensure you can all hear and see the event today without interruption. Teachers, please use the chat function on this Zoom meeting to respond on behalf of students who may have questions throughout the session. Let's begin. To start today's event and to get to know each of you and your career goals, we are bringing a poll up on your screen. Teachers, please answer the following questions based on the majority of students participating. Students, if you would like to participate, grab a pen and paper and record your own answers. Let's begin the poll. And Cherie said it's all. Okay, everyone, that's it for our first poll today and we'll have one later on as well. So thank you to everyone who participated. I would now like to introduce Michael Johnson, the CEO of Tourism Accommodation Australia. Welcome, Michael. Thank you, Sky. And, uh, and a very warm welcome to our teachers, career advisors and students this morning. As Sky mentioned, I'm CEO of Tourism Accommodation Australia. Today is an opportunity for you to learn the different career paths available in our industry. Driven by passion, our industry has a diverse range of careers available, some of which you may not have even thought of. From engineering to marketing to executive management, there's a direct career path for any willing individual. I myself started in the industry as a kitchen hand whilst on holidays in New Zealand 40 years ago. Long time, I know. However, um, my career path then led me through many of the departments that you'll hear from today uh, and then and, and all the way through to general manager. And in actual fact, uh, I was general manager of the hotel that we're streaming live from today here at the Park Royal Parramatta. Now, we have a wonderful agenda lined up for you today with our panel of industry representatives uh, from the hotel here and we're ready to inspire you with their career stories. But before we do that, we'd like to take you on a virtual tour of the hotel. Today was originally to be live, but of course, with COVID-19, virtual is the way to go. And so I'd like to introduce our general manager, Paul Flett, who's going to take you on this speedy tour of the hotel. So without further ado, over to Paul. However, students, can I just ask that you are paying attention. I'm sure there'll be a poll on some questions soon. Thank you. Hi hey guys, I'm Paul, General Manager of Park Royal Parramatta. I'm gonna take you for a tour, let's go. Yes, checking in with Jason. Okay, I'll leave Jason to it. Let's head to the bar. Hey Viv. Hey Bobby. Outside the bar, nice little beer garden. Or tea if you prefer. Let's go to the heart of the house. Here we are. We're in housekeeping. We do all our laundry in here. All done by our great housekeeping team. 
Hardest working department. Here's the kitchen. Here's my executive chef, Jack. This is our ballroom. We used to be able to do 500 people. Now we can do about five. Hello, Nick. What do you do, Nick? Oh, HR. HR looks after our careers. This is our extension. This is where we do painting parties on the weekend. So this is our club lounge. This is where our top level guests get to go. Has a private meeting room that our guests can use for free. We also do breakfast and dinner up here. Only our special guests and our special staff get to work up here. Time to get fit, let's go to the gym. All staff are welcome to use the gymnasium during off peak hours. That's why we all look so fit. And out to our left is our green belt. My French Bulldog loves this area. Go and have a look at one of our club rooms. These are where our special club guests stay. Big club king bed, free Nespresso, as much coffee as you want, and a lovely big bathtub with a magnificent view. 27 degrees as pool normally is, except right now, because we've switched off the heating. Priscilla's my revenue manager. She makes me lots of money and gives me heart attacks. So we've seen the heart, we've seen the money making. Let's go see the brain. Here's the brain of the organization. Say hello, brain. My sales team. Look, they're actually doing some work. So you see in the department that makes the money, this is the department that spends the money. It's called finance. This is where I live. Look how clean it is. Let's hope you enjoyed the tour. Thanks for coming. See ya. Well, thank you to Paul and the team at Park Royal Parramatta for that tour. It certainly was speedy. I hope you enjoyed it. As we saw throughout the tour, there's a diverse range of career paths in the accommodation industry. Although your career may not begin in the exact spot you hoped, as with any career, it's about stepping in, learning, developing your skills, and then progressing as a result. As you can see, there are a number of departments that operate in partnership to run a hotel or a hospitality business. These include operations, senior management, sales and marketing, sales and marketing, culinary acts, food and beverage, human resources, purchasing, finance, engineering and security, housekeeping, events, and most importantly, revenue. We now go live to our panel of industry representatives from the hotel who will give you insight into their experiences and career paths to date. Leading the panel is Laura De Zibio, Marketing and Operations Coordinator of Tourism Accommodation Australia. Can I say over to you, Laura? Everybody today. Michael will be joining us a little bit later on in our Q&A session. So be sure to pop any questions that you may have for Michael into the chat box and we'll make sure he addresses them later. As mentioned before, my name is Laura DeCibio and I am the Marketing and Content Coordinator at Tourism Accommodation Australia. Whilst I currently work for our Industries Association, it wasn't that long ago that I was working in a hotel as the Content Coordinator. Part of my role during that time saw me managing the property's social media channels, including Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. I would produce and manage the content that would go up on those channels. Today I will be facilitating our industry discussion with our panel of experts beside me and I will also be facilitating the Q&A later on. Again, just be sure for any teachers or students who have questions, please pop them into the chat box and we can address them for you later. Now over to our panel. Faith, thank you so much for joining us today. Would you mind letting us know what your role is at the hotel and also what department that falls under? Hi, I'm Faith Pavinawan and I'm the Digital Marketing Coordinator for the New South Wales property at Park Royal Parramatta and Park Royal Darling Harbour, Sydney. Wonderful. And would you mind telling us about your job and what you like most about it? So day to day, I manage the uh, digital footprint. So that would be our social media, websites, um, any print and online campaigns, um, it, the list goes on um, and I like the job, my job because um, there's so much variety um, and there's something different every day. Um, one day I could be working on um, designing up a flyer for an upcoming campaign and next I'll be um, 
taking photos of our new menu. And well, I also get to taste the menu at the same time. So yeah, that must be your favorite part then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds great. And would you mind giving us a quick overview of your career journey up until now? Um, so previously with, uh, with my previous employer, I did a traineeship. Um, where I did a diploma in marketing and communications. Um, I got to uh, work full-time, hands-on job experience, um, earn a salary and also gain a qualification at the end. So, yeah. That sounds great. So you mentioned you did a diploma and as well as a traineeship. Yep. How did you find working and studying at the same time? Um, it was a balancing game, um, but I was, I was able to study on the job. So I had one day where I got to um, complete my qualification and yeah, it helped with um, the hands-on experience, um, bring it into my assignments and vice versa. So That sounds great and something our students would definitely be interested yes, in today. Yeah. yeah. Um, and if you could give yourself any advice before starting a career journey, what would that be? Um, I would say kind of try before you buy, um, gain experience if you can in an internship or um, casual employment in what you want to do or ask someone who's already in the industry and um, yeah, just gain insights and make sure that you're passionate about it. Great. Thank you so much, Faith, for Thank joining you. us. Over to you, Jason. Welcome to our panel. Would you mind telling us what role you have at the hotel and what department that comes under? Okay, so I'm a uh, Jason Corpus. I'm, I'm working at front desk and uh, yeah, my role is a guest service agent. Wonderful. And what do you like most about your job, Jason? Uh, what I like is the variety of people that we do check in every day. So you experience a lot every day. So dif different, right? Yeah. So you meet different people every day. Yeah. yeah. That sounds really interesting. And would you mind giving us a quick overview of your career journey to date? Uh, I started at Kitchen Hand, housekeeping, and then somebody asked me to do the, uh, start the front desk as a guest service agent. Yeah, I'm, I'm working right now. Wonderful. So you've definitely progressed from where you first started then. Yes. Wonderful. And if you could give yourself any advice before starting out your career in hospitality or hotel services, what piece of advice would that be? Uh, for me, just follow your desire or passion. Yeah, that's what that sounds great. Thank you, Jason, for joining us. Carl, welcome to our panel and thank you again for joining us today. Would you mind telling the audience what your job is at the hotel and the department that it falls under? Good morning, I'm Carl Silo. I work in the food beverage department and I'm a team leader. Wonderful. And would you mind telling us, Carl, what you like most about your job? What I like most about the job is the concept learning that comes with it. Also, um, meeting you know, different kinds of people and also, um, yeah, customer service in general, yeah. That sounds great. And would you mind giving us a quick overview of your career journey to date? Yeah, so my previous um, experience, I've had, I worked in a cafe, restaurants, um, and now working in a hotel, I started as a bartender, um, working behind a bar, and also, and now I work as a team leader. And yeah, that's looking great. after some departments as well, yeah. Yeah, so like Jason, you've definitely progressed at the hotel that you're at. Yeah, wonderful. And if you could give yourself some advice before starting out your career, what would that be? Um, yeah, so just just give 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 whatever it is a go. Um, just be passionate about what you want to do, and also um, try to learn as well. Um, um, don't be afraid to make mistakes, and just keep going. Great. Thank you so much for joining us, Carl. Beck, over to you. Thanks so much for joining us. Would you like you. to let the audience know what your role is at the hotel and what department you're working in? Yeah, so um, I work in the reservations department as a reservations agent. Lovely. And tell us about your job and why you like it. Uh, I love working in the hotel industry because there's always something different happening. Um, there's a buzz to working in hotels and there's so many different departments. Um, yeah that you have to communicate with. So it's always different. Absolutely. And Beck, would you mind telling us where you started in your career and how you've progressed so far? Yeah. So I began in the food and beverage department uh, before I moved to front office. And then I was promoted to team leader for um, beginning in reservations. Wonderful. And did, after high school, did you study anything further or get any qualifications? Yeah, I did complete a certificate three in tourism and travel. 
That sounds great. And in terms of advice, if you could give the students online today some advice about starting their career, what would that be? Uh, just don't overstress it. Just go for something and then things will happen naturally. Yeah, I agree. Well, thank you so much to our panel today for joining us. Um, our teachers and students online would certainly, certainly appreciate the insights that they've given um, into the career opportunities as well as the career paths to our industry. Um, moving on, we now have a short video we'd like to show you from industry leader Matt Moran, who you may already know if, like me, you're a big fan of MasterChef. Um, but before we cross to that video, I'd like to just remind teachers and students to pop in any questions that you may have into the chat box as our Q&A is not too far off. But for now, over to Matt. I wasn't very academic at school. I grew up in the Western Suburbs. I left school when I was 15, and I started here when I started my apprenticeship when I was 16. You know, TAFE did a hell of a lot for me, but it also taught me the basics of cookery. And I think that's a really important point, and it's something that all my guys always look for when they're looking for a, for a young chef. Be ambitious. You know, who would have thought when I started college all those years ago that I'd be running as many restaurants as I am now? Welcome back everybody and thanks so much to Matt for that video. We got some great insights about our industry from there. Now I'd like to welcome Paul Flett, General Manager of the Park Royal Parramatta, as well as CEO of Tourism Accommodation Australia, Michael Johnson, onto our panel as we start with our Q&A. You are more than welcome to pop in any more questions that you may have into our chat box and we can certainly address them during the time. So let's get started. Um, okay, let's start with what is your favourite thing about working in the industry? Jason, I'm going to start with you because I know that you said before that you really like meeting new people every day, but are there some other favourite things that you have about the industry? I don't know if you feel weird about the uh, answer, but for me, every time I go to work, I like, we have a task to do every day and I love that. Definitely. <laughs> so, you know, the task, it will be, feel good. Definitely. I'm very much a list maker myself and I enjoy ticking things off also. Okay. Um, Beck, would you mind outlining a typical day on the job for you? So uh, a typical day for me begins at 9am. So um, just clocking on, checking the emails. Um, my, the first thing I do is check to make sure that all the bookings made from the day before are all good and um, yeah, good to go. All in a system. And do you spend much time um, confirming with guests that they're arriving? Do you have much face-to-face -face contact with your guests, whether that's over the phone or even in person? Uh, yeah, that's great. So you're on email and phone, which is awesome. It's great. Okay, Michael, a question for you. If you could give your younger self any piece of advice before starting in the industry, what would that advice be? I think before starting in the industry, um, just ensure that you you can, uh, I suppose, achieve the best that you can in your in your academic. But but then once you're actually within the hotel industry, it's it's critical to enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. Uh, there's certainly uh, you know, from my own perspective, and I know from this panel, uh, as someone mentioned before, there's so many departments you liaise with. It's diverse. It's different every day. You make sure you enjoy it, and if you enjoy it. Look, I can tell you, it's not like work. It's just like having fun every day. That sounds great. Thank you, Michael. Now, Paul, thank you for joining us. I'm sure the students are all excited to see you again after watching that quick video tour of the hotel. Um, our question for you is, where can employment in this industry lead to? I think this industry pretty much the sky's the limit. Um, as Michael said, um, most of the panel here either started off as a kitchen hand or a waiter or as an intern of some description. Um, you know, Michael's got to where he is. I'm obviously the general manager here, um, but it can it can evolve into anything. You can become an owner's representative. You can become CEO of a of a of one of the hotel companies. Um, you can get a career in advertising after working in hotels, doing social media. Probably something Faith's going to do. So, uh, to me, the answer is simple: the, the sky's the limit. It's up to you and your ambition. Wonderful. Thank you for that, Paul. Faith, over to you. Is there anything else you would like to train in or try a new area of the hotel? Um, 
yeah, I would probably would like to know more about the departments, maybe in events um, and seeing what, what it's all about. Um, Cause I think they kind of mesh together with marketing and sales and advertising. So yeah, definitely. And just a few more questions for you, Faith. I know that when I was at a similar role in a hotel, yep. it was very much a balance of creative work as yep. well as strategic work. Do you yes. find that as well? Yeah. I feel like it's uh you have to be analytical and creative at the same time. Uh, like when it comes with social media data and also, yeah, uh, looking at that data and being creative um, and like, yeah, like having something to put out from that data. Um, yeah. I think yeah. It's just a fusion of both, which is great using your left and right brain. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> it keeps things yeah. interesting. Um, Carl, you were mentioning before that you really enjoy the industry. Would you say that this, industry would be a career choice for life for you? Um, yes, definitely. I actually see myself um, working in, um, in the industry for, in, uh, sorry, in the long run, um, only because, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of um, opportunities and a lot of, um, yeah, a lot of meeting um, people and a lot of um, learning as well. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much. Paul, back to you. If a student is aspired to be a hotel manager what courses should they study um i think the first thing is if you want to be before you look at the courses you study is make sure that you have a passion for the industry and that's simple if you really like working with people um then you have a passion for the industry um in, in terms of courses i mean there's a variety out there you can do a certificate for obviously in hospitality um through tafe um, you can even start at the basics. Uh, so, for example, with Carl, we do responsible service of alcohol to get yourself in the bar. In the bar. It's more about just this, this industry is more about just getting your foot in the door um, and then you can sort of move yourself forward from there. And I agree with what the panel was saying earlier. It's all about passion. If you have passion for this industry, you will get to where you want to get to. Great. That's a lot of insight. Thank you for that, Paul. Faith, back to you. Um, the students would like to know how you got your traineeship and if you could remind them what you actually studied during your traineeship, that would be really helpful. Um, so I just pretty much saw the job ad online. Um, I thought it was quite strange because I usually see apprenticeships um, in carpentry and all that. And I saw it was a digital marketing traineeship and I said, um, why not? I'll apply for it. Um, and it just rolled off from there. So I did study a diploma in marketing and communications. Um, yeah, uh, it, that specialized in digital marketing. So my on the job training was learning about social media, um, analytics and yeah. Just great. So you mentioned that you started in another industry and then you transferred. Yes. Yeah, that yep. sounds great. And have you enjoyed that transition to hotels and hospitality? Yeah, it was great. i um, transferring my skills from um, where I was before to now. Mm -hmm. um, and my skills are always growing. Uh, this industry is always changing and evolving. Um, and yeah, that's just changing and evolving my skills as well. Great. Yeah. Thanks so much, Faith. Jason, there's a question here that's absolutely perfect for you. Um, if you are in a certain area of a hotel, so for example, if you started off in food and beverage, is it easy for you to change career paths and maybe move into revenue management? Do you see that as something that could potentially happen? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So because at first you have an experience already and then moving on another department would be easier as well. So it's just uh, within the industry. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, so progression is so absolutely yes. possible. Yeah, that's great. Okay, Beck, a question for you now. Um, as you're working in reservations, would you consider or will you consider working overseas? Is there an opportunity to travel to different hotels? What kind of benefits do you see of working in the industry? Uh, yeah, I would definitely love to work overseas. Uh, there, there's opportunities, of course, um, especially when you work for a global brand like Park Royal. There's so many different yeah, they've got their headquarters in Singapore and they've got presence all over the world, even in Canada, which is great. Yeah, great. Thank you. Okay, Paul, a question for you. We might have a student who might like to come and work for you. Oh dear. So they are wondering if I they... I apologise in advance. So <laughs> if they would like to enter the industry in year 10, where can they look to find work? Um, I'm, I'm assuming year 10 is... The second to last year of school. So I'm not Australian, so I'm not, I'm not familiar with your school system. But uh, 
age 16 or 17. Okay, excellent. So 16 was actually funny enough the year that I finished school uh, myself and entered the industry. And basically what I did was I went to um, a polytech or what you might call a TAFE here in Australia. Um, and I started just doing sort of like basic hospitality. I wasn't really sure what I was doing. And I just got a job as a waiter. Um, and I must have done a good enough job in the school holidays working as a waiter because at the end of that year, uh, the same hotel asked me to come back and work for them full time. So it, it can be as simple as that. As I was saying earlier, just just get your foot in the door. It, it really, it doesn't matter what position you start in, as, as is testament by the, by the panel that we've got here today. Um, the position that you finish in will be the position that you want to aspire to. So my, my advice is if you're leaving school in, in, in year 10 and you're looking to get a job in hospitality, do an apprenticeship maybe as a chef, um, study to be a bar person, just get your foot in the door. Um, because if you've got the right attitude, leaders like myself in this industry look for attitude. And if you've got the right attitude, we'll look after you and you'll grow. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that, Paul. Um, Michael, I'd like to ask you a question about the progression that you've had, because that seems to be a big theme of our panel discussion today. You said that you started as a kitchen hand. What are some of the other jobs that you had between your kitchen hand role, as well as your general manager role, and now CEO? Well, interestingly, um, I think I made mention I was, I was actually on a holiday uh, in New Zealand, and uh, I started work as a kitchen hand. Um, I was then. I then went into the concierge department as a porter, and uh, and I enjoyed that role. I became head porter. Uh, I was then asked if I would like to go on to reception. Um, at that time, uh, believe it or not, I was the first male receptionist. It wasn't. It wasn't. Uh, it was very much a female role at that time. Um, Today, of course, it's, it's not the case. But uh, So I was pleased to be able to do reception. Uh, I then went on and did night audit. And, uh, and then I moved into food and beverage. And I worked behind the bar. I worked in the restaurants. Um, and interestingly, a general manager, not, sim not dissimilar to Paul, actually said to me, listen, we see you have an aptitude to the industry. We see you really love what you do. We see you working through all the different departments you really should think about this as a career. And I thought, and I mentioned it before, I thought, well, hang on, I'm just having fun here. I mean, is this really work? And, um, and so as it, as it turned out, uh, I was uh, then went on into a duty manager's role and then into food and beverage management uh, and eventually into general manager's role. So it was, it was a case of, I suppose, that uh, I enjoyed the different departments, but, but I had great passion because I really, really loved it. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that, Michael. This question is to all of the panel members. Um, sometimes finding the job that you are looking for can be the hardest part of your career journey. Um, would you mind letting us know how or where you can find a job in the industry? Faith, would you like to start? Um, yes. Um, sorry, what was the question? Could you yeah. repeat that? Question? No, no, of course. So, for example, when I was looking for a job in the yeah. industry, I was looking on seek.com oh, um, okay. and the position came up. Yeah. Is there any other networks that you might know of where you can actually find a job in the industry? Um, maybe word of mouth. Um, if you have a friend um, who's in the industry already and they think that you're right for the job, um, probably jump on it and see where it takes you, I guess. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. Thanks so much for that, Faith. Um, I do know for students out there looking for a role, you can also log on to LinkedIn. It's a wonderful um, service where they actually have listings of jobs and you can apply through that portal as well, which is really handy. Um, our final question, Beck, would you mind answering this one? Um, in terms of your progression within reservations, where do you see that leading you or where would you like to see that lead you? move on to group reservations manager and then uh, revenue manager. Um, I would love to go into events as Faith said earlier um, because there's, so, there's, there's just so many departments that you can go into which is good for um, someone like me who gets uh, bored easily and likes to constantly challenge myself. So Definitely. Guys, the limit like. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And I guess the events department is really interesting because you'll be looking after weddings, corporate functions, birthdays, all different types of events, which keeps it really interesting. 
Okay, so I think that brings us to the end of our Q&A session now. Thank you to all of our industry experts for joining us today. I know that our students and our teachers that are online really appreciate your insights. And I know that we've definitely inspired some students today to consider entering our industry, which is really great. Um, now that we've heard from you guys, we will be moving on to our next part of our session today. So we want to look at how you can actually get the job that you're after. So first you need to ask yourself, are you resume ready? A resume is the first thing your potential employer will see. So be sure to include all the necessary elements such as your contact details, your previous work experience and a cover letter to support your application. Next, you must consider if you could confidently sit for a job interview. Here's two videos with some practical tips to help you on your journey to employment. The do's and don'ts of resume writing. Number one is to triple check your spelling and don't use any slang words. Number two, read the job ad carefully so that you can list the relevant skills and strengths. Number three, be sure you have your updated contact details on your resume. This includes your mobile number, email address and home address. Now, for the don'ts. Number one, you don't need to put your date of birth as age is the main focus, your skills are. Number two, Pictures of yourself aren't necessary. If you have a good resume to start with, that's what's gonna stand out. And number three, don't use unprofessional email addresses like your nickname or something silly. Instead, use your first and last name. Thanks and good luck. valued this time with our industry representatives and learn a thing or two about the hospitality and hotel services industry. We are now bringing up the final poll on your screen. I hope you've all been listening as these, the answers to these questions have been throughout the webinar today. So teachers, please ensure you answer the questions based on the majority of the students participating. Students, if you'd like to also participate individually, again, grab a pen and paper and record your own answers.
Okay, students and teachers, I hope that um, you have answered the questions. We're going to go through the questions and the answers now. So if you didn't get a chance to finish them all or answer all the questions, um, I'll read them out now and we can go through them. So question one on the poll was, what is the name of the general manager of the Park Royal Parramatta? So who was the person that took us on the virtual tour of the hotel? All right, so the answer for that one was Paul. And we can see that 75% of you got that right. So well done to those that got the answer. The next question on that review poll is, how many rooms are in the hotel at the Park Royal Parramatta? Now, we didn't give you the answer to this one, but we're hoping you can take a guess and tell us how many rooms are in the hotel. So the exact number of hotel rooms that are at the Park Royal Parramatta is 286 rooms. Uh, so if you answered between 200 and 300, well done, you've got that one correct. Question number three now is what department is not found in the hotel? So we gave you a couple of departments there um, and one of them stood out as one that's not in the hotel. Um, and we can see that 100% of you actually got that question right. So well done. The department that is not in the hotel is floristry. Although it could be a bit good business idea to get fresh flowers delivered to your room. That one is not in the hotel here at the Park Royal Parramatta. Question number four is what does Paul call the laundry? So in that virtual tour, in that video that we showed you, he actually calls the laundry uh, a name. And we gave you a few options there and I'll just wait a moment just to see if any of the students can remember. So Paul actually calls the laundry the heart of the house. So that is what the laundry is here referred to at the Park Royal Parramatta. And you would have had to be listening carefully to get that answer correct. Um, we can actually see that some of you did get that right. Actually, 58% of you, other people answered housekeeping or engine room. But in the video, Paul did refer to the laundry as the heart of the house. So well done to you that answered that correctly. Question number five now is when the ballroom is being used for events and weddings, how many people does it seat? So in normal conditions, how many people can be seated in that ballroom? So 58% of you got that answer correct. The answer is 500 people can be seated in that ballroom for a wedding or event. And the final question for the review poll today is when the staff are allowed to use the gym, what is that period called? So there was a couple of answers on the screen. Uh, the answers were peak times, weekends, early mornings or in off peak times. And we can see that 83% of you were listening very carefully and you got the answer right. It is off peak times is when the um, staff at the Park Royal Parramatta are allowed to use that gym. And what a fantastic benefit to have. Okay, everyone, thank you very much for um, participating in today's polls. I'm now going to hand over back to Michael Johnson, who's going to wrap up today's event for us. Thank you, Michael. Thanks very much, Guy. And thank you very much to all of our students, career advisors and teaching staff that have joined us today. And also, can I, can I also just say a big thank you to those that, that uh, submitted their questions today. Um, it's good to see uh, the interest in the industry is continuing to grow. We'll be sending out to the teaching staff who registered for the webinar today uh, a survey just to capture your feedback from today's event. We'll also have a recording of today's event for those students that were unable to attend uh, that would like to see today's uh, event. So that will be coming out to you.
Lastly, I'd also like to thank everyone who made today possible, uh, including Inspiring the Future, uh, the REAP program from the New South Wales Department of Education, a Pan Pacific Hotels group, which uh, is, is effectively the, uh, the group that uh, is responsible for Park Royal Parramatta here where we are live today, as well as my colleague, uh, Laura DeZibio from Tourism Accommodation Australia, who, uh, who ran the panel. Also a big thank you to Sky for her organisation. So uh, may I just say again, thanks very much for attending and we wish you a great day.